The lead is physically examined, checking for completeness of the parts. The screw is exercised by turning the pinching tool attached clockwise several times until two and a half screw coils are visible. The peel away sheath is inserted over the guide wire with the guide wire positioned in the inferior vena cava. This is done under fluoroscopy to ensure that no part of the vein or heart wall is snagged. The lead is then physically inserted through the sheath positioned in the inferior vena cava and the peel away sheath is removed as shown. Pressure is then applied at the point of entry to minimize back bleeding. The lead may be then prolapsed across the valve as such, trying to snag the tip on a fixed structure, prolapsing the lead. This is done by pulling the stylet rapidly out of the lead, which then causes the lead to jump across the valve. Once its shaft is across the valve, the stylet is then pushed in to straighten the lead with the hope of popping the tip of the lead into the right ventricular outflow tract. Once the lead is in the RVOT, it is slowly dropped down to the level of the upper septum of the right ventricle. A counterclockwise torque is applied to the lead to try to position the tip at the region of the His bundle. At this point, preliminary R waves may be measured as well as checking for capture at 2 volts. This position is still slightly high with smallish R waves, hence we proceeded to pull the lead out a little lower until it caught at the area of the His bundle. A counterclockwise torque is applied to the lead to increase the probability of lodging it at the His bundle area. The image is checked on both RAO and LAO views. The screw is then deployed by turning the pinching tool several times and visualizing the image using a magnified view. One will see the screw being deployed and the separation of the metallic part of the end of the lead into two parts confirming full deployment of the screw. RV lead testing is conducted in three parts. The first is the measurement of the R wave in millivolts. A minimum of 5 millivolts is required, although 10 millivolts would be excellent. The presence of an injury pattern denotes good contact between the screw and myocardial tissue. The second is the performance of the capture threshold test. The impedance, the pacing impedance is noted. And the capture threshold is defined as the lowest amount of energy that will depolarize the heart. This is measured by progressively lowering the amount of energy. Here we are at 1 volt and the final capture threshold is recorded at 0.7. High output pacing is performed by pacing at 10 volts to ensure that there is no diaphragmatic stimulation.